guys, we're going to do homework for 6.3, uh, 115 through 119, um, all. Okay, so you have the answers in the back of the book for the odd, but not the even, and you may not know how. So we are going to talk our way through this. It says, Joe reads out that one out of four eggs contains salmonella, okay? So that sounds like the probability of getting salmonella is one out of four. So he never uses more than three eggs in cooking. Oh, that's kind of silly. All right. So <laughs> if eggs do or do not contain salmonella independently of each other, um, so that's good, right? The number of contaminated eggs when Joe uses three. Okay, so we actually know N. So is this binomial? It's saying yes. It either does or does not um, have, a, have salmonella. Is it independent? It says it. I should write this out, but it says it right there. So I would just recopy that if it was a word problem. N is three, so we're good there. And then S, the probability of success, is uh, one out of four, and the probability of failure would be not, um, and it's weird, it's like we're gonna say, yay, I have salmonella, that's success. Uh, and then not getting, failure, not getting. So we like the answer B, it is binomial because it meets all of these, and um, N is three and P is one fourth. Okay. Now you might be wondering, well, what's geometric? So I didn't actually go over that in the lesson. And I said the homework is actually a little bit more. Um, so we'll talk about this when we um, come back to class. But geometric would be um, if you're going to keep uh, picking eggs until you get one with salmonella. Okay, and that's definitely not what happened here. We actually knew N was three. All right, next question. It says, a fast food restaurant runs a promotion in which a certain food items come with game pieces. According to the restaurant, one in four game pieces is a winner. Okay, so if Jeff gets four game pieces, okay, so that's N, and the probability of success is one in four, which means the probability of failure is three out of four, then what is the formula? Okay, well, usually I'm just gonna, you can hear me kind of dig up my notes here from last class. And it says the probability exactly one winner. So our formula was X equal K, N, C, K, P, K, one minus P, K, or my failure, right? So we're like, what is the probability of x is exactly 1, n is 4, choose um, exactly 1 success. We have the probability, so we know that is 1 out of 4, and we're winning once. And what would that mean? That would mean we're losing 3 times. So let's see which one matches. This expression here is another way to say this. That would, that would be, those are kind of equivalent ways to say the same thing. Four choose one. Those are exactly the same thing. So we, it looks like we got our answer C, which matches our formula. Nice. All right, same game, right? If Jeff keeps playing until he wins, okay, that's a geometric and I didn't teach you how to do this, but it's on the same calculator, just one button down. He keeps playing until he wins. What is the probability he has to play the game exactly five times? Okay. So this would mean that you lost, you lost, you lost, you lost, and you kept playing until you win, meaning when you win, you stop. So that would mean I must have won on the fifth try because I stopped. It took me exactly five times to win. Well, we actually know how to do this from last class, right? 
lost is three fourths or 0.75. Win, and I have four of those, win is 0.25 or one fourth. And that matches with D. Cool, right? Now let's take a look at 118. Um, each entry to the table of a random digit, table D, has a probability of 0.1. Okay, that makes sense. So a table of random digits, so imagine, and you have those at the back of your book. It looks like this. And oftentimes you'll see five numbers and then a gap. And then you'll see doubles sometimes as well. And this is just a table of random digits. And it makes sense that the probability, I have a 0.1 in chance chance probability of getting a five there because my choices are either I'm going to have a zero or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. That's 10 numbers. So I have a one in 10 chance of getting any given number. So the probability of getting a zero is also one in 10, any of any number, and the digits are independent of each other. So notice if I get an eight, I could get an eight again. It's not very probable, but it would happen. Each line in table D contains 40 random numbers. Okay, so that sounds like N. We know our probability, right? It's either a zero or it is not a zero. So the probability of, of success getting a zero and the probability of failure would be 0.9, not getting it. So this is definitely a binomial distribution. So I can use um, the formula I used last class, right? That if it's a binomial distribution, which it is, then I can use this formula. Okay, so in 40 numbers, I should expect to get a zero four times. And that should make sense, right? And then what is my standard deviation formula? Well, that's the square root of n times p times 1 minus b, or failure. So that's 40.1 times 0.9. Take the square root of the whole thing. So 0.1 times 0.9 times 40. Take the square root. I get 1.897. Okay. So I'm not seeing my answer just yet, so let's see, keep looking at my choices here. 118, um, one point, it looks like my answer matches D. Let's look again, 1.90, one point, yeah, this would round to 1.90. Beautiful, okay? This is going pretty fast. One more question here, 19. In which of the following situations would it be appropriate to use normal distribution to approximate probabilities for a binomial distribution with the given values of n and p? Okay, so if n is, okay, we're just looking at each of these. We, we said in our notes, right, that this would be able to come up. Um, well, I'm looking at, not for my notes last class, but the, the, the one before. That this could come up when I have a normal distribution and I need a mean and a standard deviation, right? So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. Remember I use these formulas here, right? Mu, n times p, and standard deviation. So here, and I mean, if you look to the answer in the back of the book, you, you'll know that this is your answer. So we're trying to kind of piece together how we would select that. Right? So that would be mu, and that would be 10 
10 times 25 times 25. Take the square root. All right, so 24, 28, 32, 16, 12, 9, 8. Just kidding. All right, so we pick this because it, it appears that this would make our standard deviation fit our binomial distribution. We could also graph this to prove it. So maybe maybe I'll elaborate more on this later, but that that's what I'm going with. C and that's my reasoning. C and 